Okay, thank you for joining my session. Uh, today I will, I will talk about uh, secure and efficient data sharing with uh, federated data, uh, federated cloud storage. Uh, first, who am I? Uh, I'm Masataka Mizukoshi from NTT Lab, uh, a Japanese telco company, and I'm primarily engaged in uh, software research and development. And uh, recently, I focus on the uh, data processing platform. So I will talk about the data sharing platform across the company. So first of all, uh, first of all, I, I would like to explain the background of our effort. Uh, recently, uh, uh, recently uh, in initiative for the data sharing and the utilization across the company and organization have, uh, been, have been emerging in uh, various fields. As the uh, importance of data utilization for AI growth, uh, enterprising aim to uh, securely exchange the data with uh, their customer and leverage external data. Uh, one example is uh, tracking uh, carbon emission to achieving the carbon neutrality uh, requires uh, aggregating the data from the many Many points of around the supply chain company, supply chain companies. Additionally, the volume of the data handled and processing uh, processed by companies continue to increase significantly. For example, Snowflake report a uh, ninety uh, percent increase in task using uh, sharing data over one year. This rapid growth uh, in data demand drive the need for secure and efficient data utilization platform. In this context, uh, product, products like Snowflake and Datalake, which provide a pl uh, platform for uh, secure data management and sharing, are uh, gaining uh, uh, attention. However, uh, there are uh, several challenges to data sharing, to sharing across the uh, uh, sharing across co corporate and organization boundary. One of these is data governance. Uh, in intercompany inter data sharing is crucial to share the, uh, only the minimum necessary data while the protecting uh, sensitive information in maintaining the data governance. Another challenge, another challenge is uh, efficient data sharing. It is uh, essential to have a vast Month of uh, the da of data uh, lo located in across the various site available at the right place and right time. However, uh, in inter intercompany data sharing, uh, data is often uh, distributed across the ge geographically distant location. Uh, presenting a physical barrier to the effective use, case use of resources. Therefore, we uh, introduced the concept of virtual data lake. Typically, uh, data collection and analytics trust platforms such as uh, data lake or data warehouses uh, typically aggregate, uh, aggregate the data into a single massive data lake, essentially, uh, essentially a physical consideration of data. This approach presents a difficulty such as a resource, resource consumption from the data copying and the complexity of managing the scattered data uh, across the multiple locations, including the original data and its copies and its and any uh, derived <coughs> any derived data. To address these challenges, we implement the virtual data lake. In this approach, the original data remain in place, while only the metadata is aggregated in the Data lake. Uh, this art architecture features a uh, foundation for virtual data integration through the metadata aggregation and caching layer that supports the efficient data translation. In the metadata layer, various types of metadata, such as business metadata and technical, te technical metadata, are centrally managed. Uh, this is enable uh, unified data access across the companies, while governance functions implement authorization control based on the metadata. 
the, this architecture, the key feature is uh, our, our original data remain in place and aggregate metadata only. And finally, the uh, on-demand data transfer. Uh, this is a key benefit of our virtual data lake approach. One benefit is a uh, no data deprecation. Only metadata is moved or copied uh, while the or original data remains in store at uh, each company's locations. The second benefit is unified access control. Uh, by, by aggregating the uh, only metadata, we can uh, centrally manage the access control to data across the companies. <coughs> Next slide is the use case of the part of the battery data lake. In this use case, it's uh, calculating a greenhouse uh, greenhouse gas emission within the supply chain. To give some context, calculate the carbon emission across the across the whole supply chain, such as in the automotive industry, and needs the data from many uh, many domestic and inter international part of manufacture involving the product production production with a virtual data lake the data from this distance source distant sources can be accessed accessed without uh, centralized into the uh, in one place the uh, casting layer also enables the efficient data analysis so uh, now uh, we, I will explain how to implement the virtual data lake concept. And there are a uh, numerous open source products related to data sharing that covering wide variety of types, from storage solution and data processing engine to metadata and pipeline management software. And deciding how to uh, combine these products Effectively, it's a difficult task. Uh, there is no best practice and no uh, perfect solution. Therefore, uh, we implement the uh, concept of virtual data lake in a simple way by combining the several uh, open source software. In this architecture, we use the Alaxio in the data, data plane to uh, enable the transport, uh, transparent access to uh, multiple data sources. Additionally, we use our OPA open policy agent for access control and LinkedIn data hub for uh, metadata management. Uh, in this architecture, the uh, data catalog is centralized in LinkedIn data hub, and Alaxio uh, synchronizes the data sources information as a technical metadata. This architecture allows users to search, the, search for the data in the data catalog and access it through the Alaxio. And Alaxio also acts as a caching layer, <coughs> enabling transport access to data sources. It's also achieving effective uh, data transfer. So next slide is why we use Alaxio for data federation. Alaxio is an open source distributed file system that provides a unified data access across the different storage systems, including a cloud and on demand storages. <coughs> the purpose of using Alaxio is efficiently manage and utilizing the data uh, in multiple, pro multiple, data, multiple data sources. And it's, it's optimizing the big data and AI and machine learning workload. We decide to use a Luxio based on the following three uh, key features. The first is the data orchestration. The Luxio uh, certainly manages uh, centrally manages uh, different data source system. For example, uh, Amazon S3 and Google da uh, Cloud Storage and HDFS, and optimize data movement and replacement. Uh, this feature enables the application using the data to access it and without needing to uh, worry about the which storage system in the data residing. <laughs> Additionally, uh, Alaxio provides a unified interface for uh, access, accessing multiple data sources, uh, making it highly user-friendly from the perspective of the data processing application 
For example, uh, Elixir can easily integrate with uh, Apache Spark and Presto and other uh, similar tools. The second feature uh, is high-speed data access. Now, Alaxia achieves a high-speed, uh, fast data access by caching data in memory. Uh, this, this feature allows the uh, data on disk or on the cloud to be treated as if it were uh, a local memory. Uh, Alaxia also, uh, uh, also high high scalability and uh, making it eff effective for large scale data processing. Uh, this feature uh, enhancing the uh, data processing speed. The third feature is uh, data federation. Uh, Alaxio integrates uh, multiple data sources located in the different place and provides them a uh, single local logical view, uh, sing single local logical data view. Uh, this allows users to easily access uh, query and processing the uh, distributed data without concern for its location. For example, uh, data from the both uh, clouds such as S3 and uh, on-premise data sources can be uh, managed centrally. <coughs> uh, this needs a unified namespace. The next slide is the metadata and Manage, uh, metadata management and the data security. Uh, there are key uh, pillar of data governance here, and data quality is about uh, making sure that data is accurate and consistent and reliable, involving the processing, of validation, and cleaning and enhancement uh, to keep the meet, meeting a high high standard. Uh, with good good data quality, uh, organization can trust their data for uh, deciding to make decision making, and which helps reduce the mistake and uh, inefficiencies. Uh, data lifecycle management uh, means managing the through uh, <coughs> means managing data through its entire life cycle, from creating uh, creating and storage create a storage to use archiving and deleting. Uh, good lifecycle management keeps the data useful and reduce the risk of data using. And management and data security is a critical element in achieving the data governance. Data security is about uh, protecting the data from unauthorized access and threat. Uh, this involves implementing the access control and data encryption and uh, compliance with privacy regulation, regulation like uh, GDPR or uh, CCPA. A strong data security uh, safeguards sensitive information and maintain the trust with uh, customer and pro pro customer and partners. And metadata management supports the data discovery and accessibility to and context by uh, cataloging data across the system. It's, a, it's also a aid to aid in uh, governance by uh, providing a visibility into the data lineage and usage, and supporting better data quality. So it's difficult to achieve the complete data governance with a single software solution. But uh, there are many solutions uh, available that uh, contributed to effective data governance. In most cases, uh, data governance can uh, achieved through the combining of these software solutions. But uh, which ones you choose depend on the uh, own use cases. And yeah. <coughs> In our architecture, we use the LinkedIn Data Hub for metadata management. Uh, LinkedIn Data Hub is an open source metadata management platform uh, designed to enable the data discovery, uh, governance, and observability. Data discovery and lineage tracking in LinkedIn Data Hub uh, enable users to easily find and explore data assets while the pro providing complete lineage tracking. This feature helps users uh, understand the origin, transform, and dependency of data, uh, making, in, making it more transparent and tra traceability. 
A linked data hub is uh, designed in uh, designed in to integrate with various software, various storage and data processing platform. For example, uh, <coughs> by integrating with Apache Airflow, uh, it can manage the data processing pipeline as a data lineage. This ease of uh, interoperability with external products is one of the data hub's uh, key advantage. In our use case, integrate with external system is critical requirement. So, uh, which is why uh, we are using the uh, we are using the data hubs. Okay, next we will focus on the data security. <coughs> In general, the data. Uh, Data plane and control plane are se separated in many systems to enable efficient access control. The implement the implementation of data data plane should be uh, kept kept as uh, simple as possible. Uh, this separation is also seen in a best practice with Alexio and Apache Ranger <laughs> and data uh, data sharing protocol. Uh, to implement the policy-based uh, access control, we should uh, consider the components like the PEP or PDP. Uh, PDP, uh, PEP is a policy enforcement point, and PDP is a policy decision point. This architecture allows the dynamic access control decision based on the policy that evaluates the attribute of users or resources the first one is PDP, PEP. Uh, PEP enforces the access control on the data, uh, ensuring the only uh, authorized ac action are uh, allowed. Uh, <coughs> and PDP makes uh, uh, authorization decision based on the policy. The last one is PIP. PIP is a policy information point. Uh, policy information point is uh, uh, responsible for uh, providing the uh, attribute information to policy decision point to help to evaluate the access policy. Uh, it's gathered relevant data from various sources and such, a, uh, <coughs> such as user, user attribute and resource, resource attribute and environmental conditions. So in our architecture, uh, OPA, Open Policy Agent act the PDP and utilizing the metadata information from the data hub as a PIP. And this setup uh, enables the simple and flexible access control system. If we use uh, ent a luxury enterprise uh, editions, uh, we uh, <coughs> A proxy for PEP in front of the Alexio becomes unnecessary, uh, this one. Because the Alexio Enterprise Edition can uh, integrate with OPA or other access control components. So uh, here uh, I will believe introduce about uh, uh, Open Policy Agent. Uh, OPA is uh, an open source policy engine that enables a fine grade declarative access control. It allows policies to be written in a uh, high level and human readable language such as uh, Lego. It's called Lego, and making it easy to define the define and enforcing the policy for various systems and applications. By decoupling the, decoupling the policy decision from the uh, application code, uh, OPA provides a centralized, flexible, and flexible way to manage the policy across an organization. So uh, we can develop the OPA in distributed environment and uh, enable fast authorization decision. So uh, to return our architecture, uh, our main point, and we have combined Alexio for data uh, data access and LinkedIn Data Hub for data management and OPA for access control to implement the concept of virtual data lake. So this is a performance concern in, the, in this architecture. 
in some use cases, uh, we uh, active data sharing uh, between the companies can place a significant load to the to the system. So we need to consider the load of load on the PDP. A centralized PDP uh, policy dec decision point uh, may experience uh, increased load, leading to uh, potential system performance degradation. So in our architecture, we use uh, OPAL to make the PDP and PDP scalable. OPAL is an open policy admission layer. Uh, OPAL is an open source tool that uh, enhances the functionality of OPA open policy agent by uh, automating the policy distribution and real-time uh, update. Uh, it helps uh, in synchronized policy decision and uh, data across the multiple PEP uh, efficiently. Uh, OPAL works with OPA by uh, adding a control layer and that automatically updates the uh, uh, distributed policy and data endpoint, uh, data to endpoint when uh, they, they change, making it great for uh, distributed and scalable system. So we use OPA in this architecture. Uh, OPA enables distributed OPA and scalable on PEP and PDP. So we can handle a large scale data across uh, the companies. So uh, this is a sim simple uh, performance evaluation in our architecture where we developed a virtual data lake in the Kubernetes cluster as a uh, environment evaluated it, it with a sim simple data downloading workload. And we compare the performance between the no, uh, no authorization, such uh, this one is Alaxio REST proxy, this is no authorization system, and uh, compared to the, this, uh, our architecture. By using OPA, Open Policy Agent, uh, we were uh, able to achieve the authorization control with minimal uh, impact of performance. And also, uh, we also confirmed that, that this architecture is uh, capable, uh, capable of uh, parallel scaling. Okay, that's all. Uh, recap. Uh, today we talk about the how to uh, enable the data sharing across uh, companies, and provide the example uh, of which open source software uh, can be used. Can be used. <laughs> Additionally, the, we summarize uh, uh, our implementation of the uh, concept of virtual data lake. The future work, uh, we will uh, add the support of streaming data. Uh, it is not uh, managed in Alaxio. <laughs> and uh, explore the capability, capab <coughs> compatibility with uh, data space protocol, uh, a growing standard in Europe, to enable uh, collaboration with uh, more, <coughs> more systems or more uh, enterprises. Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you for listening.